Okay, so we're going to be making chicken fried steak. I already started most of everything. I have five pounds of ground meat here. I added a tablespoon of Uncle Chris um, gourmet steak seasoning. I also added a uh, tablespoon of your chicken bouillon, the nord pollo. And I added a half a tablespoon of your regular ground black pepper. Same amounts of spices that I did to that. I did two, three cups of flour. I got two eggs and two cups of, I used almond milk, but you can use regular milk. I just prefer almond milk. And then all you're going to do is mix the egg and the um, milk. Make yourself a little ball just to fit your palm. And I have a presser. You can press it by hand. It's totally up to you. Okay. I like them real thin. The reason I put the plastic is so it can stick to the um, plastic and not the pressure itself. I like them thin because I want to keep them in and out real quick. Okay. Sometimes they tear up a little bit. That's fine. Go ahead and put it in the flour first. There's nothing to do in a chicken fried steak. Now, a lot of people use regular steak. They pound it till it's thin. I don't like the flavor of the regular steak. I'd rather have a ground meat steak instead. I'm going to be gentle with this one because they're kind of thin. You can do it by hand. It won't be as thin. You can dip it again if you like. If you want a thicker crust. I don't prefer a thick crust. I like a thin crust. I got my oil going over there. I'm going to go check to see if it's hot enough. And all I'm going to do is just drop a little bit of flour and it should tell me if it's hot enough or not. Okay. It did kind of sizzle a little bit, but not enough to get this fried up the way I like it. I already have some steak fries that I cut up. Um, to put as a side dish with this. I have them in the oven. I didn't feel like turning on the stove and messing with putting the fries and deep frying them. So I'm just going to bake them today. I put a little bit of salt and pepper and that's it to it for the fries. Okay, and I'm also going to have uh, just the regular store-bought roll um, for our side as well. I'm going to make a, a, a gravy once I finish uh, pressing these and finish cooking them and stuff then I will go ahead and make a gravy and then if it comes out too thin for you re-roll it out do it again totally up to you I'm also going to have a salad, which I already have in the refrigerator. I'm going to just make a little quick salad, do some red onion cut up to it, sprinkle some um, shredded cheese on it, some red onion, and some fresh garden tomatoes. Um, I have my own tomato plants, however, they have, they're not growing until probably late August into September get a second batch of tomatoes then but a friend of ours gave us some fresh tomatoes from the garden so that's what I'm going to be using okay let me go check that oil again I'm just repressing them again just to make sure they're a little firm, not too um, soft before they go into the uh, oil and I don't want them to break. I want the oil hot because I don't want the, a lot of oil to be soaking into the patty itself. Okay, I'll we'll check that oil. Okay, the oil is ready. Okay, 
Okay, we take off these. I'm going to take you over. Over here where we're going to be frying. I'm trying to make this as quick as possible for you all. rack here on top of my grill where I'm going to rest it a little bit. You can put them in the oven, uh, but right now I have, um, I don't want to put them in for a seal because they're going to get sweaty and the, the breading will get soggy. I'm only going to do one at a time. Okay, you're going to let it brown until a golden brown on one side. And then once that is brown, flip it over and let the other side brown. I don't like mixing my raw meat and the utensils that I use with my raw meat to the ones that are already cooked. I don't want to cross contaminate anything. Okay, it's still looking a little pale. But the crust is exactly how I want it. Okay, like I said, I had two cups of milk, two eggs to the milk mixture. And to the flour was three cups a flour to one tablespoon of Uncle Chris's uh, gourmet steak seasoning, uh, one tablespoon of the chicken bouillon, which is milk, uh, milk pollo, and half a tablespoon of your regular black pepper. I mix that to the milk mixture and also I did the same amount to the flour. Okay, I still want it, a it's already looking good. Getting color on the other side. I also have some um, broken corn. Um, right now I have it here boiling softly with uh, some butter and salt and pepper. Once it's done, I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of uh, Parmesan cheese. I like it that way. Sometimes I'll do a little cream cheese on it, but I don't have cream cheese today, so we're going to do the Parmesan. Okay. It's still a real light color. I'm going to go ahead and let the other side cook, but I'll probably end up flipping it over one more time. As you can hear, it's not sizzling as much. That's a good indicator that it's already cooking through. It is already thin meat. And the thicker you make it, the more you're going to have to leave it in there. So that's why I like mine very thin. I don't like a big old steak, um, a chicken break steak. I, mean, I like them small. You can always get seconds. If we need it. Let's see here how it looks. Okay, looking good. I'm going to try to make this video real quick. So once I cook this one, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and I'll come back once I get that gravy going. That way you can. Um, learn how to do the gravy for it. There's so many different ways of doing gravy. You can do a packet uh, country gravy. Um, I like doing mine from scratch out of milk. And I will be doing a uh, quarter cup of butter to a cup of flour. I'll add just a little bit of salt and a little bit of um, black pepper. Toast it up just slightly just to get it a little golden, not too dark, and then I add the milk and go ahead and thin it out to the way I like it thin. 
and just keep on mixing it. Take all the lumps out. Now, the thing that I do add to my homemade milk gravy that I'm going to make, I'm going to add a can of your cream of chicken, and it changes up the flavor, and that's just the way I like it, but you can definitely do any kind of gravy you like. You can even do brown gravy if you like. That's totally good. The color's perfect. The crust is crunchy, just the way I want it. I'm gonna go ahead and take it out. And like I said, I have this little rack right here. It's at top of my grill that I have on this side. And I'm just gonna let it rest there, let it drip some of the fat into that. And that way, um, it'll stay crispy when I serve it. So it's breaking up just slightly. Just add it back together. Hey, you don't want to drop it in there because you'll splatter yourself and you'll burn yourself. So just put it in slowly. It shouldn't be popping that much when you first put it in. Okay, I'm going to be back as soon as uh, all of them are done. I'll get that gravy going and we can go from there. Okay, I have a, actually I didn't take measurements because I did it by eye, but I'll give you some measurements with uh, with the flour and everything for the gravy. Now I'm going to last chicken plate steak. I have some butter in here and I just put some flour. And all I'm going to do is just cook it off. Toast it just a little bit just to get that flour flavor out. And all I'm going to do is just add a little bit of salt and um, pepper to this and the milk. And I'm going to go ahead and add the cream of chicken as well. Just to give it a different flavor. And that's what it looks like. I'm going to toast it just a little bit more. Get a little bit more color to it. And just keep on whisking. Take all those lumps out. And it's going to start thickening up. Okay, let's see. It's thickening up. You're going to keep on adding your milk until you get it to the consistency that you want. Go ahead and add your pepper and your salt. Okay, I already added a 15 ounce, actually I think it's a 28 ounce of um, the cream of chicken to my milk gravy, I guess you want to call it. Just taking out all the lumps here. That's perfect right there. Okay, 
Let me serve a plate and I'll be back. Okay, so just getting the last touch-ups here on the chicken fried steak. I didn't feel like making rolls, so I bought some rolls. Got some buttery corn here, the chicken fried steak, the gravy, some steak fries. I'm going to do a quick salad. I like a little bit of cheese on my salad. Some bacon bits as well. I actually like roasted corn in my uh, salad. Little here. Okay, so that's little here. This fresh garden tomatoes, not from the store. Just a few little tomatoes here, and some. Red onion, which it looks purple to me, but they say it's red. And just a few, not too much. I prefer a lot of onion, but my husband doesn't. And I got myself a little olive garden dressing. No, I'm sorry, not olive garden. This is the organic Caesar. Okay, here it is. Some corn, the chicken fried steak. Okay. Let me cut into it, okay? Okay, and this is what it looks like on the inside. Just I love it. Take a little bite. I like adding Tabasco to mine. Mmm, it's really good. Y'all have a good evening.